Hey, welcome to Max tutorial number 31, multi-input effects in jitter number B. That's because we're going to be doing Eclipse today. And when I am talking about multi-input effects, I mean effects that need more than one video input. Though technically Eclipse doesn't, but we'll figure all that out in just a minute. You know, the first thing I realized when doing this was that when you want an effect in Max, you're thinking, oh, well, I should just be able to go find all the effects somewhere. And if you search for them, you will never find them. Here is the how I discovered to find effects. Go over here and get a browser, a file browser, and whoop, there it is. I've already I was so frustrated doing this, but there it is. Type special up here. And the reason that special results in getting effects is that they tag them special effects. But humorously, if you type fx, you won't get anything. Here, let's try it. fx. Well, you get some fx, but not really any. But the weird thing is, if you type in special, you'll get all the effects. So, unfortunately, that's where we are. But here we have um, most of the jitter effects that um, we might wish to find here. And the effect that we're going to do today pardon me, is Eclipse. So let's drag Eclipse right on out here onto our page and then get it just up here high enough that we can make a P window for it. Type the letter J. You'll get the an object with a JIT already typed in it, and then type P, W, and that should be enough to get a P window. You might have to type the whole thing, I don't know, but then just click outside it. And if you like, use the Shift key to keep it in scale, and then we'll just scale it up to a size where we can see it very nicely and connect that left outlet to the left inlet of the P window and we're almost ready to go. Of course, since it's for multiple videos, we're going to get multiple videos. Um, sports fans today, let's have a little basketball action and what could be more uh, appropriate for basketball action than a countdown clock which has nothing to do with basketball but it is a countdown clock so it's high drama here so there we go so we have two inputs on JIT Eclipse here's one matrix so let's get the left hand outlet of the file player there and connect that and the left hand outlet of the other one and connect that. I love using my segmented patch cords to make everything. Don't do that. Look, look, no, I need to go in that one there. Sorry. There we go. Look, it fixed itself. You clever Max. I love you so much. Okay, so now we have our two movies that will play in there. And of course, um, I always like to see what the movies look like up here, so I like to get a second um, and third P window. So I'm just going to option click on this one, resize it, holding the shift key, of course, and sticking that under there, and then option clicking that so that I can get another one over there. So now we can see what left outlet to left inlet, turn on the loop, whoops, lock your patcher, turn on the loop, turn on the loop, turn on the movie, turn on the movie. Okay, so got the basketball player dude here, we've got the countdown going here, and now we just have to figure out how to make Eclipse operate. Um, normally I come over here and look in the reference section. Let's uh, unlock our patcher and highlight Eclipse here. And then um, 
find out what all the attributes are that we can adjust, and then we pick out the good ones and adjust them. Now, it's also worth noting that when you're doing something like Eclipse has a very specific intention when um, it's made to do something. So if you're just going to adjust the additional blue channel scaling, that's probably not going to be all that exciting. But what it does do, and you can of course check the help file too, is that it takes one video and can make make it out of rows and columns of the other video, right? So the rows and the columns are the most important thing. So let's just see what word we should use to adjust the number of columns and the number of rows. In this case, it's columns, and in this case, rows. Okay, so these are the two big things in Eclipse. So we come back over here and we type in, we type prepend rows. And then we can put, um, let's just put, you can't really have a decimal number of rows. Maybe you can, but I don't think you can. So I'm going to type in i to get an integer box here. So whatever integer comes out of here, it will be prepended by rows, and it will tell Eclipse how many rows to make. And then I'm just going to copy the whole thing, option click it, duplicate it, change this word to columns, columns with the silent N for all you terrible spellers out there. All right, so now we can see what the real value of Eclipse is here. So let's start turning up the rows. Yeah, there we go, see? We've got seven rows of basketball players now, and we have seven columns of basketball players. And uh, you know, let's make it eight so this poor thing can center itself. I think it'll center itself. Maybe it will. All right. So you, if you get the idea here, the countdown movie is modulating the output of the basketball players, but all of these are little frames, each one of a basketball player. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? Let's turn it up to like 11 or 22, better yet. There, you're starting to get the picture now, now that we're up at 47 and 22. So there it is. You can even read the number in little tiny basketball players. I am telling you that it just could not be nicer. If I um, get these numbers approximately the same, and if we could put on our magnifying glass and look at this, we would be able to see that um, itsy bitsy basketball player inside here. And we can do that also just by turning this down to a, you know, seven or eight or so. And now we can see the basketball players and the ones going around here. But now we can't read the number anymore. Oh, life. Okay, so what about the other stuff that Eclipse can do? Well, the best way to find out about that is to unlock your patcher and go ahead and option click on Eclipse and the help file comes up and you can see that um, hey look we can just put the same movies right in here go go and turn up the number of columns turn up the no, excuse me that was rows this is columns so we get essentially the same thing you can, it says invert them, but it doesn't invert them. And you can change the blue and red tinting and things like that. Okay, that's what the blue and red tinting's for. So, whoops, didn't want to change that, wanted to change that. 
So that other stuff is just for minor adjustments. There you go. And then has some sort of mode thing here. Color tint mode, etc., etc. But minor stuff. For the most part, this is what Eclipse does. And this is, oh, they have examples. There you go. So there you go. You can look in the help file and find out what it really does. But my real word of warning was just to people who are putting eclipses in their projects and things like that, and then the only thing that they're putting in there is, you know, changing the, the green adjustment and the size, uh, isn't it? The main thing about Eclipse is that it uses rows and columns, so you have to have rows and columns um, adjustable to use Eclipse. Hey, I think that's it for Eclipse, so uh, you know, uh, have fun with it, and uh, I really like that. Um, you know, go crazy. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.